For an in-depth look now at the situation in Lebanon, I'm joined via Skype by Emin Garib. He's an academic and Middle East expert at the American University in Washington. Welcome back to the show, Edmund. Thank you. So, for 20 months now, Lebanon's economy has been going to free fall. Food prices are sky high. The currency is rock bottom. How do we get here? I think a lot has to do with what you reported. Basically, the, there are a lot of problems with the political leadership, with the political system. There's a great deal of corruption in the country. The political leaders uh, are constantly fighting with each other. And uh, at the same time, uh, we are seeing that even the friends of uh, the country uh, who promised aid are, in fact, putting pressure uh, on the political leadership because they don't like internal politics. Uh, and particularly, the, what we have seen is the support uh, that uh, Hezbollah has in the country. Uh, and we saw, for example, the decision that was taken by President Biden recently uh, to extend the national emergency from concerning Lebanon. So this is the 14th year. Uh, so uh, Lebanon is facing a lot of problems. There are the internal problems. There are structural problems with the economy of the country. There is a great deal of corruption. There is sectarianism. All of these have contributed to the current crisis. And this is a country, as you pointed out in the beginning in your report, uh, Lebanon was considered uh, the envy, uh, envy of, the, of the region. You know, many of its neighbors used to come to Lebanon, spend a lot of time there, spend money. And they, uh, this Lebanon was described as the Switzerland of the Middle East and Beirut as the Paris of the Middle East. But now the country is paralyzed. Uh, there are serious problems, structural problems, uh, whether it is uh, economic, whether it has to do with medicine. Doctors are leaving the country. Medicine is not, uh, uh, people are unable to buy uh, medicine. They don't have the, current, the, the foreign currency that's needed. Many of the expatriates, Lebanese expatriates, are now who are visiting Lebanon or are, have the friends going to Lebanon, they are sending medicine. Uh, to relatives uh, uh, carrying bags of medicine. So the situation is uh, 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 terrible in any way you look at it. Uh, the, the political system is paralyzed, deadlocked, and there is no uh, light at the end of the tunnel. And even if time was bought uh, you know, for a few months, and if, uh, unless there are structural reforms, unless there are radical changes in the system, I think that we are likely to see a continuation of this problem. Let's talk about these radical changes you think are necessary. Uh, what needs to happen? Well, one of the main things is that we, we need, first of all, the World Bank is saying that uh, for Lebanon to get support from the World Bank, they need to have economic uh, reforms, and there has to be an accountable government, accountability. Uh, but I think much more important than that, what we have is a political system uh, which is uh, uses sectarianism, based on sectarianism, which divides the Lebanese people amongst themselves and creates a great deal of tensions. And the people who benefit from this are the, the leaders who are, many times that you find them socializing with each other, cooperating with each other, but they use the sectarianism to strengthen their base in the country. So the sectarian system in Lebanon has to be changed. Uh, to, and, I mean, Lebanon is a country of many paradoxes. You have, on the one hand, people who are who have this sectarianism. At the same time, you have many secularists in the, in the country. Uh, you have very, very smart people, very hardworking people, and you have people who are relying on governments or on organizations. So the, the, this, this situation has to be changed and to change radically. But the problem is that even if the reforms are adopted, this is going to take a long time. Uh, to implement them. And that is also one of the problems uh, that's facing Lebanon. Were it not for the expatriates who are going, some of them going back home to visit in, during the summer uh, or sending money to their relatives, I think the situation uh, would have been much, much worse. But that is sort of a temporary uh, solution that does not solve the problems of the country. And when we have just about 30 seconds left, I, I'm trying to talk about you know, the politics here. Uh, you, know, you bring up just this, you know, a caretaker government right now. Why is it taking so long for us to form a new government? 
uh, particularly because of this uh, uh, struggle among the political leaders. And it's a struggle for power. There's, and that is one of the main factors. Of course, sometimes it's covered by sectarianism for sectarian or religious reasons, but that's only uh, a, uh, the facade to a certain extent. Because as I said, these, many of these leaders, they work with each other, they socialize with each other. And, and unfortunately, sometimes they, the, uh, the leaders gain support by their, from their followers, uh, despite the fact that uh, uh, the whole system, these, whole le these leaders are corrupt. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much. I'm Garib, academic and Middle East expert at the American University here in Washington.